Today we are into week three, the final week of our series, sadly, on photography. It has been hugely illumining for me to look at what a photographer thinks and sees, is able to understand and know, and to ask, what does that teach us, God, about what it means to see and understand and know you more? This morning's message is going to focus on the theme of light. It is, according to Noah Fallis, a professional photographer here at New Hope, the medium of design when it comes to photography. And most, if not all, and I would imagine every photographer who's worth his or her salt would agree, including a tremendous now deceased photographer named Galen Rowell. Today, we are going to look at the topic of light through Roel's lens, through his being, his heart, his passions, his camera. And we're going to look at the theme of light through the lens of Jesus Christ, who once said, I am the light of the world. And the hope is that Roel's relationship with light will help us better understand Jesus' relationship with light and know, help us to know and experience the light of Christ more, and that the light of Christ will do the reciprocating action as well. Galen Rowell was an adventure photographer, sort of leading the edge of that movement in the past few decades. He was a mountain climber first who discovered a camera and then discovered that he had eyes. And one of the things that Galen Rowell is best known for is how he captured those perfect moments of natural light. It seemed he had an eye for the nuances and the color and the directionality and the intensity of light. Sunlight, starlight, moonlight, it didn't matter. Rowell loved the light. And when I read that last phrase, I just thought, I love the light, the beauty, the illumining power of the light, the varying directions and intensities and colors and warmth and goodnesses it brings. It's quite something to think that we can conceive of and even perceive something that's invisible. These are the kinds of pictures that Galen Rowell was made famous by. This is a pond near Sele, a town called Sele in Nepal. This is entitled Late Summer Snow, High Sierra, California. This is a self-portrait that he took in Patagonia, Chile. These famous mountains are called the Grand Cathedral in Pakistan. And this one's entitled Peter Croft, a friend of his. Peter Croft with Diffraction Fringe in High Sierra, California. Franz Lanting, another famous photographer who worked with Rowell, said that he noticed evanescent light in Rowell's images, like the most famous of landscape painters who could capture that evanescent light, he used that same light to capture peak moments. Lanting wrote, his photographic vision grew out of a unique mix of athletic abilities, which normally you don't think about in terms of photographers, not this one. Um, grew out of a unique mix of athletic abilities, technical skills, intellectual understanding, and artistic intuition, which enabled him to identify, chase, capture, and interpret those ephemeral moments when light and landscape interact in ways that transcend specific situations. There are moments that are the moments where the light is just right and the angle perfect and the timing is just 
there are those kinds of moments. And in those peak moments, when you see them with these lenses and they capture your heart, or where, when you see them with a camera lens and you capture that image, those peak moments are where something transcendent happens. Something more than just a mountain and just some light could ever be. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, his disciples, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And there he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as the light. And just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah from history, talking with Jesus then and there. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while Peter was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. An ephemeral moment when light and landscape interact in a way that transcends, transforms, transfigures a situation. And those disciples and maybe some of these disciples, saw who he was. I can imagine this holy moment they were caught up in that enveloped them like a cloud. This is God, and God is here with us. And in that moment, time just got blown out of the way. Moses was there, and Elijah was there. and Just like when you take a photo or you go out on a shoot and you just get lost for hours, and time disappears. Time disappeared at this transfigurative moment. Something real, very real, and transcendent happened. And just an ordinary scene. A couple of guys going up a mountain on a hike together. They met the face of God. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Light. 